Well, hello. Our topic today is an interesting one uh, and one many people have, and that is, well, I like the unseen therapist. I'm getting results with the unseen therapist. But how do I know when I'm asking unseen therapists questions and trying to communicate, how do I know if I'm really getting something from the unseen therapist or just my own ego chatter? How do you distinguish between those two? Well, it's an important question. It's one that takes a little skill. It takes a little experience. It takes a little understanding and so on. But once you get it, ah, you can make this distinction. And it's really quite important. And joining us today is a, is a seasoned optimal EFT or unseen therapist ear. That's a word. Okay. Marion Billich, Dr. Marion Billich. Hi, Marion. Say hello. Hi. Hi, everybody. Hi, Gary. So you heard the question. How do we distinguish them? Because our, our chatter is telling us a bunch of stuff, okay? We ask a question, unseen therapist, what's going on here? Or what can I do now? Or that kind of thing. Mm -hmm. And you sit there and listen and you know, <laughs> how do you know? Well, there are many different ways that you yeah. can tell. Yeah. We'll talk about some of them. But you're right, this constant chatter, the beliefs that we, we have, what we learned from our parents, what our culture told us, um, our feelings, constant chatter, fears. So I have created ways of distinguishing that voice to help people I'm working with learn to hear the difference between the voice of wisdom and the voice of the unseen therapist and the chatter that goes on in your mind. Sure. And the first one is, I think, the most important in a way is whatever she says to you is based in love and it's not judgmental. So if you get something that sounds like, of course you should feel guilty. You were terrible to your sister. That's not the unseen therapist. Or, you know, your brother, you have every right to be angry at him. And I think you should cut him out of your life because he's not good for you. That wouldn't be the unseen therapist either. Instead, you might hear something like, for now, your brother's really hurting you. And so for now, maybe you may not talk to him for a bit until you're ready to engage with him. That would be more like the unseen therapist. Or even something like, if you think about it, one of your brother's biggest needs is love. Mm -hmm. How can we do that? Yes. That would be another example. Although at first people may not be ready for that. They'll say, sure. I don't want to send him any love. <laughs> he doesn't deserve <laughs> any love. But that's where the work comes in. You're yeah. both needing love. And that's the voice of the unseen therapist. Yes. It's a voice of love, never judgment. Um, now, I know with myself that there are times that it might have seemed like she was judgmental, but really it wasn't. She has a sense of humor. And I remember one time where I really hadn't been listening to what she was saying. She would say things and I would go, mm -hmm, and then not listen. So <laughs> one day I asked her a question and she didn't say anything. It was just total silence. So I said, how come you're not answering me? And her response was, well, you're not going to listen to me anyway. So I say anything. But it was said with humor. It was the tone of the voice and it was the smile on her face because I could see her in my mind's eye. Um, that I knew she wasn't judging me. She was just making a point with humor. So she's never judgmental. Yes. Always patient with us. And she's also very aware. She's very aware that we have this belief in separation, which is simply a dream and an illusion. And there's lots of even science behind the fact of that. But, but she's aware of that. And, uh, you know... <sighs> She's aware that, that our ego is always in there trying to give us the answer because our ego knows. Yay. Okay. <laughs> and it's like, it's like all these messages are being broadcast to us, you know, and most of them are from our own ego. <laughs> do this, do that, you know, stomp on somebody if they get, get in your way or whatever. And the gentle channel of the unseen therapist is there as well okay. mm. and it's 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 so different but we don't see it as different to begin with practice 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 but anyway 
That's yes. just my two cents. Yeah. Go ahead. It's a different tone. It's patient and loving. Um, and even when she said, you won't listen to me, it wasn't a judgment. It was using humor to make her point. Yeah. She was patiently waiting for me to some, to listen to her. And I did after that. So. Yeah. She might say something like, well, okay, this resentment you have, um, you need to take some initiation here mm -hmm. to help solve, resolve this resentment because they aren't going to do it. Well, okay. Our ego often doesn't even want to hear that, but that's a very non-judgmental. Let's, let's have peace. Let's, there is a way out of this kind of thing where everybody wins, but you can initiate and start. The ego says, no, 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 no. I'm like, yeah, 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 yeah. And on and on it goes. So you have this little battle going on. But eventually, if you keep listening and acting on the wisdom, important phrase, okay, <laughs> acting on the wisdom, it invariably ends up being the right path. Yes. I can attest to that from my experiences. Yes. Right. Well, but she's very patient, however long it takes us. Yeah. So. yeah. We can blow it over and over and over again. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And, and there's we, no judgment. Yeah. And we do blow it over and over and over again. Oh, you know, yes. <laughs> quite often. Okay. So anything else you want to add? Oh, yes. There's okay. several things. One uh -huh. is what she says was never will come out of fear or, or speak to a fear directly. For instance, she'll never say to you, don't make that presentation at work because you're going to fail. That would not be the voice of the unseen therapist. Instead, you would hear something like, you're very frightened about making this presentation. You have lots of fears about failing. Let's look at this. Let's look at what happened to you in your life that would make you so fearful. That would be the voice of the unseen therapist, not yeah. the voice that says, don't do that. Something bad will happen. Yes. And by the way, that's the voice that tends to predominate until you start getting used to the unseen therapist. Okay. Yes. But this, this is an ongoing project. Listening more carefully, learning to distinguish her voice is something that takes years of work for some people. Some people faster than others, particularly children. But it's something that you develop and learn to distinguish that voice. Um, she's also never frantic or agitated. You won't get a very intense, agitated response from her or message from her. Um, I'm thinking of an example of, of the opposite of that. I was working with a man who told me that one day he was driving on a bridge and it was very dark that night. He couldn't see that well. And he heard a voice in his head, which was very clear saying, put your foot on the brake. And he heard it a few times and he listened. He put his foot on the brake of the car. And it turned out there was a car stopped on the bridge with no lights on right in his lane. And the voice that told him that was not frantic. It was just put your foot on the brake. It was clear. And that's the difference between the unseen therapist and this frantic, don't do that. Or do that right away. That wouldn't be the voice of the unseen therapist. Let me ask you about that. I haven't heard about that one before, but here you're driving, you get this message, put your foot on the brake, but you see no reason okay. for it. Do you know what happened? Did he put his foot on the brake? Yes, he did. And he avoided colliding with the car. Yes. Now this was someone who had been listening to that inner voice of wisdom for a long time. So oh, it wasn't okay. new to him. All right. All right. That was going yeah. to be my question because yes. coming out of the blue, the ego you usually know, overrides. Where did this come from? Yeah. 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 No, yeah. And that's, a, again, an example how in practicing, um, you get better and better at distinguishing that voice. And, and when he got that message, it wasn't, it was urgent, but it wasn't frenetic. It wasn't agitated. It was just put your foot on the brake. Yeah. So, this is this is an important idea, uh, the, the idea about learning to listen to unseen therapists, distinguishing, you know, really what is the, her voice versus the ego and all of that. 
we need to get to a point, and this does take practice. And this is this is in a way is what our high end advanced optimal EFT course is all about. And then it's getting to the point eventually where all you do is listen to the voice of the unseen therapy. Even at the grocery store, should I buy these mm -hmm. bananas or those peaches, mm -hmm. for example? And you're in a conversation with somebody and somebody says something, well, what should I say in response to that? Okay. Rather than let your ego tell you what to say. And then it's next thing like, you know, you're in an argument. Okay. And you're in a business negotiation and, and decisions for your business and, uh, and your family and your relationships and raising your children and education and all the other things that go on that where we, we are so used to listening to our ego which is so often not that right, right? Not that correct. Better if we could constantly, constantly get to the point of listening to the unseen therapist. And if I may get on my pulpit for a bit, if we could teach this to everyone in the world, including our political leaders, there would be no need for war, poverty, demonstrations, uh, and all the mm -hmm. other stuff that tends to happen in our war, it would be all very peaceful because there wouldn't be any, there'd be no need for wars because all the conversations would be in a oneness type place. We're not used to it. We're not used to it. So we have to do the ego way for now, but we want to get there. That's the point. That's the yes. point. And optimal EFT is, is a very, good structured way of making those steps toward listening. Yeah. Right. And that's what I like about it. Okay. Anything more on our topic? Yes. Oh, please. <laughs> um, one last point. My experience, and it fits with what you were saying, is the more we work on listening to that inner voice of the, the unseen therapist, the better we get at distinguishing her voice from ego, from our parents' voices, from the culture, and I wish I remember the name of the woman who told this story because I'd love to give her credit, but I'll just have to tell her story anyway. She talked about a group of, of mothers, let's say 15 mothers are standing in front of a nursery or sitting in front of the nursery and in the nursery are all their babies. And as they're talking, one baby starts crying and one mother gets up and says, that's my baby. I'll be right back. None of the other mothers get up. None of the other mothers question. They just continue talking. And, and her point is that when you have a baby, you are so attuned to that baby's sounds, to their different cries, to what they're trying to tell you, that even though to the outside world, it would look like there was a baby crying. To those 15 mothers, it was clear that it wasn't, 14 of them, it's not my baby. And one of them knew that's my baby. And that's the same thing as working with the unseen therapist. The more we communicate with her, the closer our connection with her, the deeper our relationship with her, the easier it is to know, oh, that's her. That's her speaking. Yeah. Yes, yes. So. Yeah. Oh, be I, still, be still my heart. That's beautiful. That's really nice. Yeah. I wish I could give this woman credit, but I don't know who yeah. she was. Well, whoever it is, we'll give her credit. Thank her. <laughs> okay. And if it's unseen therapist, by the way, she doesn't need the credit because that's the way she is. Okay. All right. Anything more, Mary? No, that's it. All right. Really nice. Really nice. Okay. I hope our I hope our visitors really digested this because there's a lot here today. So mm -hmm. take that, okay. do it as you will, and we'll see you next time. Okay.